Good evening everyone and welcome to the Third and Four Angels Ministries. We will now uh, have part in taking notes and please grab your Bibles. For those who are present, please take notes and listen to these studies for your salvation so that we will learn this message once again. And welcome to the Third and Four Angels Ministries. For those who are present, we would like to invite you to have a word of prayer before we begin. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, as we kneel before you on this holy Sabbath, we want to praise you for the life you've given to us. And may the meditation of my mind be directed by you. I ask for your grace and your mercy upon those who are present and viewing, and those who have interest in these more deems and the convocations, that you may inspire them and give them strength. Help us to endure in these messages. In the name of Yeshua, I ask. And may the meditation of my mind be directed by thy Holy Spirit. For thy glory we ask and pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. 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 <coughs> <coughs> Thank you for being with us today. I'd like you to turn to John. John chapter 17 and verse 1. John chapter 17 and verse 1. In reading and your hearing, John chapter 17 and verse 1. These words speak Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And the Father, and a blessing to our reading. The third volume of ministry presents the prophecy of of the Passover slash unleavened bread that's very important for us to understand. In reading our key text once again, these words speak Yahushua and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Why? Because his hour had come. His hour had come for his crucifixion. In these studies I will share with us what had occurred prior to his crucifixion. Also in the month of Sivan, which is actually Passover, uh, Passover not Passover, uh, Feast of Weeks, and we will be sharing. With the time that's altered to us this evening, I hope that many of you will understand that we are going to do an in-depth study on the day of Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, so that we can understand what in the world took place. Understand what Feast of Unleavened Bread was all about. What the Omer understood and was given for us for, not the wave sheet, it's an incorrect word, it's the omer. For those of you who are present, please put your phones away and let us enter into the Sabbath and not break His commandments so that we may have a right to be blessed, sanctified, and made holy. I ask you this with kindness and with a firm hand, please focus on Christ. <clears throat> the words speak Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Now he says, Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee in all that he done. The grape juice represents his blood. The matzah, unleavened bread, represents his body. They were to eat for those seven days, unleavened. Leaven, in reality, is sin. And this is the purpose of preparing the home for the presence of the angels in Yeshua, because they will be present with us. Now what I also like to emphasize, please take note. Passover. In John chapter 2 verse 4, I have to read a few key verses in regards to this study. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Referring to the wedding in Canaan, my hour has not yet come. In other words, it wasn't time for him to be pat, to be back, uh, crucified. Excuse me. Our second verse, John seven verse six, seven and eight. Let us focus here, please. Thank you. Then Yeshua said unto them, "My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it." that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. Why? 
for my time is not yet full come, fully come. Enticing Yahushua, my time has not fully come yet. He had said it several times to several, several groups and personal people. However, in John 13, verse 1, turn with me to John 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Can I hear an amen? And unto today, he, he still cares for us and loves us. Excuse me. Now, before the feast, he knew that his hour had come. Yahushua knew his calendar. These Moedims, ladies and gentlemen, everything in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 44, that is a calendar of events that take place. Those are appointed times, set times, that take place every six months out of the year. If they were not so important, they would not be binding today. There are pastors out there in Secrets Unsealed and various 3ABN, Amazing Grace, uh, I mean Amazing Facts, that are declaring that this is all done away with. What has been done away with is the ceremonial laws. At the time when Christ was alive in 31 AD, in the spring when he was crucified, they were observing and keeping the laws that they were under. There were ceremonial laws. The feasts they were binding there were 2706, dealing with the animal sacrifices, which is in the masculine. Today, this masculine is in the feminine. It is 2707, 2708. This is referring to as Moedims that are located in Leviticus chapter 23. And let me share it this way. Your weekly Sabbath is found in Exodus chapter 28 through 11 when it was given to Moses on the week of Passover in the Mount. Or was it given on the week or the day of weeks? Pentecost. Yes, it was Pentecost. And that is a convocation. People want to call it a Moedim. But we'll get into these studies and share with you the difference between a convocation, a Moedim, a set time, or a pointed time. But bear with me. When Moses was giving the ten, given the Ten Commandments, that was on the week of Pentecost. That's when they were given to him. And from there on, he also received the Torah the full statutes, judgments, and notices how to govern his people that deals with us today. Now what everybody wants to do is they want to wash everything away that doesn't have no binding for us today. Just communion service, wash your feet, and partake of unleavened bread or grape juice, or for that matter, eat a little wafer and a little piece of juice, and then go wash the feet, and that's it. When we're supposed to eat unleavened bread for the whole week, then they'll say, well, this is only for the, who, for the Hebrews or the Jews. This is for them only. It's not for us. No, it's not. It's for the whole world. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that it's done away with. He instituted a new ordinance. And that ordinance is communion service. It's foot washing. And he told them, you're not all clean yet. We're to partake of it and do it often. And it's a memorial of his death and resurrection. That bread, that eleven bread, represents his body that was crucified for you and me. That body that was tortured and stripped and whipped and pierced. We should have received that, but Christ received it. That grape juice represents his blood that was shed for us. That went straight down the pole and fell on top of the mercy seat. All the way down. We want to be sanctified. We want to be blessed. So what has been nailed to the cross? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. The enmity and the ordinances that were against us. Also Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. The animal sacrifices, the grain offerings, the ceremonial laws that were part of the animal sacrifices of the sanctuary service, which is the ceremonial laws. So before Christ passed away or was crucified, they were observing them. They knew what it all meant. However, when Christ was crucified, what ended 
was all those verses I just gave us. Daniel 9, verse 27. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It's a ceremonial law. So all that ended at the cross. So what is binding? If Leviticus chapter 23 are in the feminine, and they're still binding, then all these other rituals and ceremonies are all done away with. So what's left is worship. Turning to the scriptures, preparing for the latter rain. First, we were preparing for the early rain that was given to them. Christ told them. He walked with them 40 days after his crucifixion. He walked with them. He taught them. He brought to the remembrance what he taught them. There wasn't no New Testament. So they were using the Old Testament. They understood 613 laws. They were under that covenant. So what's changed? What's changed is that man has turned around and rewrote everything to suit humankind to worship on Sunday. That's what's changed. So does it make us any different than Sabbath keepers? Or does it make it any different from Sunday keepers? Because they're all holding it, and they're all holding it to the best of their knowledge or when they know when. Or are they holding it in an ignorance in a wrong time? It was given to the Hebrews. It wasn't given to Gentiles. It was given to the Hebrews first, and from there they taught the rest of the world. The gospel went to the Gentiles in 34 AD. Without the spring feast, feast of weeks, and the fall feast, Nobody would know the first and second advent of the coming of Yeshua. And if you all want to do away with this, all these pastors, if you all want to do away with it, then you might as well just do away with the Ten Commandments. Because you're never ever going to know when He's going to come. You're going to, not ever going to know what communion service is all about. And you're not ever going to receive the early, the latter rain. And you're never going to know when He was baptized. You're never going to know when He was circumcised. You're not ever going to know when He was born. Because the Bible tells us that. The Bible tells us that. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, there is a book that was put together. It's a compilation of the writings of Ellen White. And there's a topic in the book, and the book is entitled, Adventist Home. It talks about Christmas. And as you open the pages, it begins to read to us, saying that no pastors, no one knows when Christ was born. That's a lie. The Bible tells us when he was born, when he was conceived, even John the Baptist. And those studies are out there on YouTube for your understanding, your edification. The Bible's correct all the time. Continuing. Now before the feast, a better word for feast is Hagab. That's the correct pronunciation in Hebrew. Yeshua knew that his hour had come. Yahushua knew his calendar. His calendar was not a Julian calendar that was existed in his time. It was a Karaite calendar, a very accurate calendar. And this is what he was respecting, and he knew it, he understood it. We're not under a Gregorian calendar today, people. We have to understand the Bible calendar so we can understand these key points these appointed times, these set times that occur, these are Yahweh's memorials. These are His Moedims. They're not belonging to the pastors, to the evangelists, or to the people. They belong to Him for humanity to give Him reverence. He demands reverence. This is what's being overlooked. And we understand that many people are going to shy away when people put away and put down these Moedims. Because they are putting down many components that do not exist until we open the books and bring everything out. So what the Seventh-day Adventist Church has done is that they nailed these feasts to the cross. That's what they did in 1888. They hid them. Let me go on for a moment. Turn to John chapter 8, verse 20. These words speak Yeshua, Jesus, in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Can I hear an amen? It wasn't time for him to be crucified. 
as his hour had not come yet. John 17 verse 1, our key text. These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Can I hear an amen? amen? Glorify thy son. This is what he was asking. Turn with me to Ministry of Healing, page 479. Made Christ, referring to Christ. Yeshua made no plans for himself. Day by day, the Father unfolded his plans for himself. I'd like you to read Patriots and Prophets, first chapter. Read that whole first chapter. You'll find some evidence in there. Now, let's begin with the fall of 27 when he was baptized. Remember, it was in the fall. You need to know this. It was in the fall. Fall of 29, the second year. So we're going to talk about three and a half years. In the fall of 30, and in the spring of 31, when he was crucified, it was in the spring, 31 equals three and a half years. He was in the spring slash prophecy on time. He was crucified. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 12. So we're going to turn to Exodus chapter 12. Let's go back a little bit. Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 5 and 6. In reading, Your lamb shall be without blemish. So on the tenth day, they would go out and look for a lamb that would be without blemish. And here's the key text. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. In the evening. Now, this is a prophecy that was referring to Yeshua that was coming. Yeshua was without blemish, without sin. He was perfect. He was perfect for the crucifixion. However, let me take a note. Note, Yeshua thought that he was going to be sacrificed as a lamb. And when he went on to the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to the Father, If it be thy will that I not drink this cup, may it be thy will. Christ knew what was going to happen. He was going to be crucified. Not slaughtered. Crucified. <clears throat> he understood. And we understood today. In 2022. We know that the month was in Abib. We know that the day was on the 14th. And we know that the hour took place. Which was at 9 o'clock in the morning. Those three key points. Once again. The month is Abib. And let me share with me, pause. Pause. All these pastors and evangelists that are preaching that he was the month of Nicene, etc., that is Babylonian calendar of knowledge. We don't want that. We want the correct month of when he was crucified, who is Yeshua. It's the month of Abib, Aviv. Amen? The month that he was crucified is Abib. The day was the, 20, it was the 14th, the year was 31 A.D., and the hour was 9 o'clock in the morning, A.M., between the two evenings. <clears throat> between the two evenings. So on the 14th was Passover. Now I want to share a picture here. This is a Jewish meal that's going to take place on Passover. Now this is what they ate then, and this is what's celebrated and done today. Now, we do not drink alcohol, but all these little decorations refer to Christ. If you've ever had a Passover with the Hebrews or with us or with Jews, I'd like to invite you to partake of it. And so you may learn the history of what happened and what the people were doing. You see, when they left Egypt, they left Egypt in haste on Passover. And when they were drinking, they were looking around and drinking. And they were eating that unleavened bread. Because they were walking in haste. Two million plus people were leaving on Passover. This is when it occurred. Continuing. Two evenings. At 3 p.m. would be the afternoon hours. 6 p.m. is Sunday actually sets. This, excuse me. 6 p.m. is when the sun actually sets. So 3 p.m. Turn with me to <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 
I'd like you to turn to it. If you have an opportunity, if you'd like to make a comment, feel free. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. In reading, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamp, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, Hamashiach, our Passover, is, is sacrificed for us. And the Father had a blessing to our reading. So therefore, in the month of Abib, the 14th, in 31 AD, at 9 o'clock in the morning, there's your month, there's your day, there's your year, there's your hour, that Yeshua HaMashiach was crucified. We got that information because it's coming from the Bible. The Bible is telling us that. The Bible is telling us that it's in the first month, Abib, in the month of the year. It's not Nicene, that's a Babylonian calendar name. Our Savior was not under that Babylonian system. It was under the fourth empire of paganism, Rome, yes. In Matthew chapter 27, let's go a little closer to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, and we're going to go to verse 45 and 46. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 and 46. In reading, Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Stay with me. And about the ninth hour, Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthim. That is to say, my Elohim, my Elohim, why hast thou forsaken me? This is what was being discussed at that moment. So from 6 to 9 hour is the ninth hour is 3 p.m. Okay? Now listen to me. I know this is difficult to understand, but it's at 3 p.m. In other words, the ninth hour here is referred to 3 p.m. when he gave up the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. It's a better name. Paraclete that he released his last breath. Biblical time. <clears throat> Let me give this to you. You're going to need this. Take note. The ninth hour is 6 a.m. hour, which is the first hour. Can I hear an amen? The ninth hour would be the third hour. The twelfth hour is the sixth hour. 3 p.m. Is, is of the afternoon would be the ninth hour. Nine would be 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 53. I'm reading. Verse 50. Yeshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, the paraclete. Okay? And uh, let me read verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twin from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Verse 52. <clears throat> Are you there with me? Verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Stay with me. This is in the spring of 31 AD. Okay. Let me read that again. Verse 52. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose, verse 53, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Unto men. So therefore, when Yeshua HaMashiach was resurrected, he resurrected after the three days and three nights on that third day, he was ascended out. And specifically went and resurrected 120 people out of different locations. Those were his trophies. Those were his righteous people. Okay? Yahushua died at 3 p.m. between the two evenings. The month of Abib on the 14th day, the 31st year A.D. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And I want to come a little home here for some. And many of the Jews would say, no, no, no. Well, the Romans are the ones that turned around and stopped our 
sanctuary service and trotted everything down. That's why we weren't able to hold the feast no more or sacrifice animals. Now the red heifer is going to be prepared. Now they're going to build the temple. And all this is going to happen and Satan's going to come. Well, is it really going to happen that way? Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. And he, Yeshua, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. One week. From 27 A.D. to 34 A.D. Okay? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined, shall be poured upon the desolate. So how did it say it here? It didn't say the Romans, did it? Let me read it again. In the midst of the week, he shall see, he shall cause the sacrifice and the blessings to cease. In other words, in the midst of the week, he would be crucified. And that priest was inside the holy place getting ready to slice the throat of that lamb, and that lamb got away. And when the lamb got away, he was shocked. Because right behind him was a curtain that was 25 inches thick and was slit in half. That indicated that Christ had made a way for us to enter the Most Holy of Holies, from the holy place into the Most Holy of Holies. The sanctuary is always correct because these Moedines represents what's inside the sanctuary. Okay? And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So that's what ended. It ceased. Before we get to that, we need to talk about the feast of born baptized, or may I say, let me read that. Before we get to that, we need to talk about the feast of born baptized died and it was supposed to happen on time. Okay, so when he was born, it was on the month of Tishri the 15th. He was baptized in 27 A.D. In Leviticus 23, verses 9 to 11. First fruits occurred on the 15th, the day after the Sabbath. Day slash high Sabbath. On the 16th, wave the omer before the people. Fulfilled by 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. First fruits. That's when he was resurrected and the omer was presented. That was on the 16th. Feast following the way of the sanctuary. Okay, so the feasts are always following the way of the sanctuary. Yahushua was the one that in that fulfilled the prophecy. Excuse me. Number one, the flesh of Yeshua in John 6 verse 59 had no sin. He was perfect. Number two, the body of Yahushua had no corruption. Can we hear an amen? So the body was not being decomposed. So in other words, if you're sick, like today in 2022, and you're sick with this coronavirus and all these other sicknesses, when you die, that body is going to decompose quickly. And you're going to see how bad that body was. But if you die, you've been healthy, etc., it's not going to look that bad. I mean, you look, you're dead. Number three, his body saw no corruption, no sin. However, in closing, the feast followed the order of the sanctuary time and time again. We will continue our studies. I want to thank you all for being with us this evening. If you have any questions, feel free to call 540-370-1844. I'd like to also share with you is it keep us in prayer as we'll pray for you. As you request your prayers, we will answer them in prayer. And may Yeshua give us the response in your prayers. Let us close in prayer for those who are present. <coughs> Our Father who art in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to review the week of unleavened bread. When he was dead in the tomb and first fruits. As we close, may thy Holy Spirit bless us and give us rest and take care of us. In the name of Yeshua we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen.